Hey, uh, somebody asked me the other day about fusing HDPE, and there are a couple ways to do it. I mean, it's a real simple process. You're basically heating up the surface of one piece, and you're heating up the surface of another piece, and then you're sticking them together. They melt together, forming a solid piece. Uh, welding or fusing, super strong. It's done properly, should be just as strong as any other part of HDPE. Now there's a couple ways you can do it. You can use uh, like a, a propane torch and heat it up like that. You can use a heat gun. Both of those are a little messy for me. It's too hard to control your heat displacement, particularly when you're doing small, small sections like these that we're going to do here in a minute. We're going to test them out. What I did... I bought a hair straightener, got a cheap one, $12, $13, whatever. I took out the hinge pin so it comes apart. And this one has ceramic coated, well, I don't know if they're ceramic or not, but it's coated, uh, nonstick coated pieces, and it's got a temperature and thermal control gauge, so I go, goes up to 450, I go a little lower than that. So you turn it on, and then you let it heat up, and what you'll do is you'll just stick the parts that you want to fuse right on there. And they'll heat up and melt. And that controls your heat so you're not, you don't have to heat up the whole section, you just the joint you want to do. So I'm going to do that now and we'll see how that works out. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. Still warming up. We'll see how this works out. Just want to make sure you get good flat contact throughout the process. You can, you can feel it when it starts melt. Make sure you get as much on there as possible. You want to make sure it's molten all the way across the surface though. And when you join them together you need squeeze out all the way around. It'll be difficult here because I'm going to use these two boards, well this board and this uh, bench to align it properly. So it'll limit the amount of squeeze out I'm going to get. But you need to get some squeeze out most all the way around to ensure that you've done a good job Let's look at one here. You can see that it's molten in the center there, but not quite on the edges. So that means that it either wasn't cut flat or I rocked it a little bit. So you got to make sure that it's heated up all the way across. This one's getting pretty close to good to go. A little pressure. And when you're done, you just let these cool off and the stuff picks right off. The whatever's left over comes right off. So there we have it. It's still warm. You can feel it's warm in there, so you wouldn't want to put any force on it yet, but I mean, it, it glues on pretty quick. So I'm going to sand off this and see what we get. Okay, scraped it off, sanded it off a little bit. Looks like it's on there pretty good. The alignment looks all right. waiting to do the next part. I'm just going to scrape these down. You see this stuff comes off pretty quick once it cools a little bit. Okay. Okay. Turn it back on. We'll get ready to heat 
the next part. That will be joined up with this. Okay, here we go. Okay. Speed is the key here. You won't have too much time to futz around putting that together. Pressure. Don't burn yourself. That's what we got. And I can shape it up. And now I still have to put on the wrist brace, but I still have to cut that piece out. All right, we're going to test out our two seams. Here's one, and there's the other one. Got some paracord wrapped up here, got it in my bench vise. You can see that the seam right here is on this side of the braid. Now it's, it's pulled up against here. I'm going to pull back over here. You can see that. So there's the uh, scale that we're going to be using. Let me get that set up here. And this is a uh, scale. There it is. So that's the, uh, that's how you know how much your max pull was, so I'll set that back at zero. Hook it up through both of those. Okay, let's give this a yard. Okay, so that went over, what is that, 70 pounds right there. Okay, I'm going to pull on it again to that same weight. There it was, and we're going to try it one time even a little lower. All right, I've got that set up again. So you can take a side view, and I'm going to run that up to about a little over 70 pounds. That's 70 pounds right there. I have it. No. Looks like it's held up pretty good. We'll test it out a bit. Let me cut out the uh, arm brace and then carry on from there. Okay, I have cut out and fused on the end piece. So this is just a little, uh, little shuttle craft, little uh, extended fork shooter that I made. It's in uh, four pieces: the barrel, the forks, the grip, and then the armrest. It fits together nicely. I think pretty good. Not bad for, you know, being new to that. You can see. Let's make sure you can see this properly. You can see uh, where I've joined it together, right there. So it's been fused here, just in front of the trigger guard there, and then of course here. And I still have enough room to countersink a screw right in there, so it'll go through the fork and into the barrel. That's why it has this extra material here. Anyway, that was a uh, that was a look at fusing and kind of what you can do with it. Uh, you know, be real careful because if you don't do it right, it may not stick properly. But, you know, I put a lot of weight on this and I'm just going to use this one as a, uh, because it's got so many joints and it's so long, I'm just going to use it as like a little plinker probably. I wouldn't put heavy bands on it or anything. But, you know, pretty happy with it so far as like a little demo piece. All right, just got done making it, banded it up. It's got double layers, natural latex on it. If 
fire off a couple rounds. See how it works. Hey, not bad. See if I can do that again. There you go.